The St. Clair River Tunnel between Port Huron, Michigan and Sarnia, Ontario and Canada opened for rail traffic in 1891. The tunnel was built to expedite rail traffic over the border instead of using costly and time-consuming railroad ferries to cross the river. The tunnel spanned 6,025 feet and traveled underneath the St. Clair River with 2% gradients on either side. The St. Clair Tunnel Company, a subsidiary of the Grand Trunk Railway of Canada, was going to need a hefty and strong engine to drag freight and passenger trains over the border. With this in mind, O10O Camelback tank engines were built for the job. Four locomotives were built by the Baldwin Locomotive Works, being numbered 598 to 601. They had 50-inch diameter driving wheels and had a hauling force of 58,500 pounds. At a weight of 195,000 pounds, they were the heaviest locomotives in the world for their time. They came in at a length of 40 feet, a width of 10.5 feet, and a height of 15 feet. They were painted green with yellow lining, a gray boiler, and black smoke box. The Camelbacks burned hard anthracite coal or coke with the goal of producing as little smoke as possible. On October 24, 1891, the first revenue freight train traveled through the tunnel from Port Huron to Sarnia. The first passenger train ran on December 7, with ferry service then being discontinued. The large tank engines could handle 20 to 30 car freight trains with ease and shuttled passenger trains between Michigan and Ontario for the Chicago and Grand Trunk Railway and the Grand Trunk Railway of Canada. They operated in push-pull service without turning around because of the Camelback design. Eventually though, in 1898, the tank engines were renumbered 1301 to 1304 and became tender engines with their side tanks removed to lessen stops for coal and water. Despite these changes, a consistent danger with steam locomotives in a tunnel is smoke inhalation. Fatal cases of these were unheard of for the tunnel, combined with portions of trains breaking away and rolling back into the tunnel from loose Lincoln pin couplers. While knuckle couplers would remedy the Lincoln pin problem for the most part, a 3,300 volt AC electric system was brought in to replace the steam engine between 1907 and 1908. Built jointly by Westinghouse and the Baldwin Locomotive Works, six electric units were built number 1305 to 1310. A single unit averaged 25 to 30 miles per hour and weighed in at 134,000 pounds. They came in at a length of 23 feet 6 inches, a height of 14 feet 11 inches, and a width of 9 feet 8 inches. The units were initially painted black with white lining, letters, and numbers. The electric locomotives made their first revenue run on May 17, 1908. In 1910, the steam locomotives were renumbered to 2650 to 2653, and the electrics renumbered to 2655 to 2660. For a time thereafter, both steam and electric worked together pulling trains through the tunnel. However, the steam engines would first see retirement by 1916, with number 2652 being scrapped that year, and the other three locomotives by 1920. The St. Clair Tunnel Company was now a fully electrified railroad. By 1923, the financially unstable Grand Trunk Railway of Canada would be merged into Canadian National Railways. CNR would assume control of the subsidiary St. Clair Tunnel Company as it now shuttled trains for Canadian National and Grand Trunk Western. That same year, the tunnel company's electrics were again renumbered to 9150 to 9155. A new unit, numbered 9156, arrived in January 1927 as a result of increased traffic in train sizes. Two units, numbered 9175 and 9176, arrived in March 1927 from the Chicago South Shore and South Bend Railroad as surplus. The last new addition to the roster came in 1941, a gas electric, later powered by diesel, wire maintenance locomotive from Montreal's National Harbors Board. But it was around this time that diesel locomotive power was starting to make a name for itself on other railroads. This would see the St. Clair Tunnel Company units being renumbered one last time, by removing the 9 from their running number. This was in order to free up slots for Canadian National's new diesels. By September 1958, diesel power took over for the costly and aging electric locomotives. Canadian National had to buy Westinghouse's plans for the electrics to build their own repair parts. Removing the locomotive change made operations much faster and less costly. The St. Clair Tunnel Company's name would become obsolete, and the electric units would be scrapped by April 1959. Except one. Number 707 had been sent to CN on its electric Montreal line, but 707 would be retired and scrapped by 1968. Most of the catenary towers would be removed by 1986, and the tunnel would be replaced with an adjacent new and much larger tunnel portal in 1994 to accommodate larger railcars. 
This finally eliminated the railroad ferries reinstated during 1953 and 1971 by the Chesapeake and Ohio Railway and Grand Trunk Western, respectively. While the St. Clair Tunnel Company may be gone to history, some remnants do remain. The builder's plates from Electric Unit Number 9151 is part of the Kamoka Railway Museum collection in Kamoka, Ontario. Additionally, two catenary towers still stand at the former site of Tunnel Depot in Port Huron, Michigan. While modern CN diesels speed through the new tunnel with fast and high priority freight trains, it's still important to remember what came before, during an electrifying era of Michigan Railroad history.